Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Hey, Doc. Oh, hello, Chester. Come on over and sit down. Well, I guess it won't hurt for a minute or two just to sit here. Oh, <laughs> might as well be sitting out here on the street and just loafing around your office. Yeah. Oh, no, that's a loaf. Oh, Say, now, if, wait, if I could tell you I didn't I mean it. nothing, Doc. I wasn't even thinking. Oh, well, I can believe that. <clears throat> What's bothering you, Chester? Mr. Dillon. What? I'm kind of worried about him, Doc. You are? Why? Well, look. It is near dark and he ain't showed up yet. I don't even know where he is. Well, I think Matt can take care of himself, Chester. Sure, but usually he leaves a note or something, Doc. Well, a man doesn't have to do things the same way all the time. I know now, that. Now, for instance, it's like Mrs. Hull the other day. She came to ask me how to get her baby to sleep at night. Now, for example, what would you have told her? Oh, no. <laughs> now, you think. You just think now, Chester. After all, you were a baby once. How'd your mother get you to sleep? She didn't have no trouble. Well, the usual way is to rock the baby. But you know what I told Mrs. Hull to do? Doc, I really ain't interested <laughs> Well, you're in going to hear it anyway. I told her to take the baby and smear its little fingers with thick molasses. What? Yes, and then I told her to give it a half a dozen chicken feathers. What for? Well, I figured he'd pluck the feathers from hand to hand until he fell asleep. And then if it woke up again, all she had to do was to give it some more molasses and feathers. Well, it seems to me that'd only make the little baby mad. Oh, man, that shows how much you know about babies, Jack. Oh, my goodness <laughs> gracious. Can't we talk about something else, Doc? Uh, so you start something. Hey, wait a minute. Um, There's Mr. Dillon. Where? Riding up the street there, leading that horse with a pack on it. Oh, yeah. Doc, look. What? That ain't no pack he's got tied on that horse. No. No, that isn't. That's a man. A dead one. Yes, yes. Who do you suppose it is? Well, I don't know. Hi, Mr. Dillon. Hello, Chester. Doc. Hello, man. Who you got there? Mel Hornby. Mel Hornby? I went out to ask him some questions about that sod buster that got murdered last month. Oh, Jake Reeves? Yeah. That Hornby took offense, and he tried to kill me. We well, think he had something to do with the Reeves murder, man? He did it, Doc. He admitted it just before he died. A big rancher like old Mel Hornby killing a poor half-starved little homesteader? Ah, they had an argument about something, and Hornby's temper got the best of him. The way it did today. But how come you brought the body to Dodge, Matt? As you think Mrs. Hornby had won him out there. I didn't find him at home, Doc. He was way out on the prairie handling some stock. I'll get a wagon in the morning and take him back. Take him? Oh, I don't envy you. Old Mrs. Hornby's a pretty mean woman. Yeah, I know. Uh, you better let Chester do that. Uh, she can't blame him for anything. No. I'll do it, Doc. I killed him. This is it, L 
M&M filters, it stands out from all the rest. Miracle Tip, much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L&M's got everything. Everything? Everything. Best flavor? L&M stands out for flavor. The Miracle Tip draws easy. Let you enjoy all the taste. Best filter? L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white Miracle Tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobaccos? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L&M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. L&M is sweeping the country. It's America's best filter tip cigarette. Joseph. I hired a team and wagon for you standing outside. No, thanks. <clears throat> Near 10 o'clock already? Yeah, well, I'll get started here. There you are, Marshal. Miss Hornby? Where's my husband? You got him here? Uh, well, why don't you sit down, then? I've been sitting down since dawn on a saddle. My husband didn't come home last night, and I figured it had something to do with you. You found him, didn't you? Yes, ma'am, I... I found it. Well, where is he? You got him in jail on some fool charge? I want to know what's going on, Marshal. I should have made you tell me when you come by. Miss Hornby, your husband's dead. What? He tried to kill me. You shot him? I had to. You killed my husband? I wanted to talk to him about Jake Reeves. But as soon as I mentioned Reeves' name, he went for his gun. I'm sorry it happened that way, ma'am. I don't believe you. Why would he do that? What did he care about Jake Reeves? He killed him, Miss Hornby. I didn't know that, but he admitted it before he died. Is that true? Yes, and that's true. Well, he should have had a trial. He'd have got off. Who cares about a man like Reeves? You murdered my husband, Marshal. He didn't have a chance against you. He had a gun and he tried to kill me with it, man. Too bad he didn't. But you're going to die anyway, Marshal. What? I said you're going to die. I've got money. I'm going to hire you killed. Now, wait a minute, ma'am. A thousand dollars, that ought to do it, and you can't stop me. There ain't a thing in the world you can do about it. All right. All right. Who are you going to hire? Oh, so you can be watching for him or maybe go right out after him? No. Ain't going to work that way, Marshal. It ain't one man I'm going to hire. It's a whole army of men. You won't have a chance any more than my husband did. Now, where's his body? I'm going to get him buried and then go to work on getting you killed. Coffee, Matt? Uh, no, no thanks, Kitty. I think I've had enough. <laughs> uh, hey, that was a good dinner, wasn't it? <laughs> Matt, you're awful calm for a man who's been threatened the way you have. Now, uh, Miss Hornby? Don't you think she meant what she said yesterday? Well, I don't know where she's going to hire an army for a thousand dollars. Well, I suppose it is some kind of a compliment. She thinks that I'm uh, that hard to kill. Well, you're not taking this very serious, Matt. Now, there's nothing I can do, Kitty, until I find out what she's up to. Well, maybe she's just crazy. She sure sounds like it. 
Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Where'd she bury him, Matt? She take him back to the ranch? No. Now she buried him up on Boot Hill. Boot Hill? She said if that's the way he got killed, that's the place he was going to get buried. Sounds like she was mad at him. I think it was shame, Kitty. She wasn't very proud of her husband getting shot down like an ordinary lawbreaker. That's a pretty easy word for a murderer. I don't think his killing Jake Reeves meant a thing to her, Kitty. Why, he might as well have shot a horse for all she cared. All she cares about herself. Mr. Dillon? Hello, Miss Kitty. Uh, hello, Chester. Sit down and have some coffee. Well, I'll sit, but there ain't no time for no coffee. Well, what's that poster you got, Chester? That's what I come to find you about, Mr. Dillon. I tore this poster off the board down at the depot. Uh-huh. But there's more of them. The fellow there told me she's putting them up all over Dodge. What? Hey, here, you read it. $1,000 reward to the first man that can prove Matt Dillon is dead. He doesn't have to prove anything else. Money is in safe at Dodge House and will be paid in cash immediately. Signed, Mrs. Mel Hornby. Matt, she can't get by with that. You can put her in jail. He sure can. And I'll go around and tear down the rest of them posters. Mr. No, Mel. no. No, Chester, too many people have read them by now. And some of them are probably already thinking about it. And put her in jail till she takes it back, Matt. Make her print up some more saying it isn't true. You think she'd do that, Kitty? Miss Hornby? Matt, you're going to have every greedy bum in Dodge out trying to ambush you. Yeah. Yeah, Kitty. A whole army of them. I spent the next couple of days looking over one shoulder everywhere I went, sitting with my back to the wall, keeping away from windows. And come evenings, I tried to get set somewhere before it got dark so I wouldn't have to walk past alleyways or through patches of light on the street. Strings a man tight living that way. Too tight. I found that out one afternoon when Chester and I were sitting on the porch in front of the office. I locked the door out back, Mr. Dillon. At least ain't nobody going to come up on you that way. Oh, good, Chester. Wouldn't you be better off sitting inside? Out here I can see what's going on. You couldn't see a man with a rifle if he was hid out in one of them buildings across the street? No. And I can't dig a hole and hide in it either. Oh, sir. Look yonder at that fool kid. He's going to run somebody down riding that way. He's trying to ride like an Indian. Look how low he's bent. Hey, he's got a gun in his hand. Hey, Doc Chester! (laughs) Mr. Dillon, you hurt Mr. Dillon? No, he missed me. But he was shooting mighty close. Well, you got him. Yeah, I got him. That kid must be crazy. Riding by like that and trying to shoot you? Yeah. Say, you don't suppose... I don't know, Chester. (laughs) He's still alive. I'll carry him up to docks. You take care of his horse, huh? Yes, sir. My, he's awful young, ain't he? Yeah. He's awful young. conscious now, but I, I don't know how long it'll last. Is he gonna die? You better hurry if you want to talk to him, man. No. Okay. How you feeling, son? <laughs> bad. Real bad, Marshal. Uh, Doc will take good care of you. <laughs> Uh, who are you? What's your name? 
<laughs> Can't tell him my name. Well, why not? My name don't matter. All right. But you tried to shoot me. Why? Reward. Thousand dollars. We needed that money. We needed it bad. Who needed it? I seen you sitting there. Then I went and got my horse. I almost killed you. But I'm sorry I did it. I'm real sorry. I don't worry about that now. Everything's going to be... <laughs> I'm a... Marshal. Uh... Son? Doc? I'm right here, man. He's dead. Nobody could have saved him. No. How old would you say he was, Doc? Oh, 15, maybe. It's not your fault, Matt. I killed him. Now, Matt. I'm going over to the Dodge house, Doc. Mrs. Hornby? Yeah. you. I thought it was somebody come for the money. Somebody almost dead, Miss Hornby. That's so? I killed him. You kill a lot of people, don't you, Marshal? But I have to. Well, maybe the next one will get you. Maybe. What'd you come to see me for? I thought maybe I could get you to change your mind. What's the matter, Marshal? Getting scared? Well, I don't enjoy knowing somebody might shoot me any minute. Ah. But I don't like the idea that I might have to shoot somebody any minute either. Well, shouldn't bother a man like you. I told you your husband tried to kill me. Don't you understand that? I don't care about understanding it. You know who you hired this afternoon? It don't matter. Except I wish he'd been a better gunman. He wasn't a man, Mrs. Hornby. He was a boy. Fifteen. He was poor. He needed the money for somebody else. I don't even know his name. I thought you killed him. How do you know he did it for the money? He didn't die right off. Oh. Well, how does it make you feel, Miss Hornby? The next one won't be a boy, Marshal. Or the one after that. Miss Hornby. What? You're a terrible, selfish old woman. L&M. I've got L&M. I've got L&M. And L&M's got everything. Best filter. No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best flavor. The miracle tip draws easy, lets you enjoy all the taste. Best tobaccos. Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L&M tobaccos. Light and mild. Today, buy L&M. It's sweeping the country because it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Yes, today, why don't you get L&M? Because L&M's got everything. This is it, 
L&M filters. L&M's got everything. It's the best. That night, a drunk staggered up to me on the street. He had a gun in his hand. But I buffaloed him before he could use it. And I threw him in jail. Later, about midnight, it was different. A mule skinner tried to shoot me from behind a water barrel. His first shot missed. And a second later, he discovered his mistake. The barrel was empty. And he died there. And nobody else seemed willing to take a chance. At least that night. The next day, about noon, Chester and I were on our way to Delmonico's when we saw Ms. Hornby coming up Front Street. She's looking right at you, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, she's probably going to complain about how I treat her hired hands. Too bad she's a woman, ain't it? Things would be a lot different if she wasn't, Chester. Maybe she's thought it over. Maybe she's going to change her mind. It'll take more than a couple of killings for that. Mm, she don't seem to care at all that her husband murdered poor old Jake Reeves. My, if she ain't the one meanest looking woman, she's waiting for it. <clears> Hold, <throat> oh, Miss Hornby. I want to talk to you, Marshal. All right, ma'am. I hear you killed another man last night. The first of your men I killed was a boy, Miss Hornby. Still harping on that? Doesn't bother you at all, does it? He was a fool to try it. That money meant a lot to him. Find out who he was? No. Well, it don't matter. No, not to you. Marshal, I'll make you a deal. A deal? That's what I said. I'll withdraw the reward if you get out of Dodge. Leave the country and don't ever come back. Why? It's my business. Why? It's beginning to bother you all, the blood that's being spilled Never up. mind that. You're going to do it? You know, Miss Holdenby, you haven't thought straight since your husband got shot. Got shot by you. By me. What's your answer, Marshal? Miss Holdenby, I hate killing. I hate it as much as you hated losing your husband. But I'm not leaving. You sure, Marshal? I'm sure. Mister? Who's that? Let's see what she wants, Chester. Yes, sir. I'm coming, lady. You'll just kill more men if you stay here. Till one of them gets you. You're the only one that can stop that, Miss Hornby. Well, I ain't gonna stop it. And some man that knows what he's doing will be along soon, maybe today, Marshal. You're not helping anybody this way. Mr. Young? Yeah. Um, this lady's looking for you. She drove that wagon all the way to town to find you. Near 20 miles, she says. Oh, is that so? Um, well, what can I do for you, ma'am? I don't want to bother you if you're busy, Marshal. No, it's all right. I'm looking for my boy. Your boy? He's going to get himself in trouble less than I stop him. Bad trouble, I know it. Oh? Uh, what's he planning to do, ma'am? Well, I, I'm ashamed to tell you this, Marshal, but he took his gun when he left home yesterday. So? There'd been talk about that thousand-dollar reward for you, Marshal. How old was your boy, ma'am? Going on 15. He doesn't know what he's doing. I, I gotta find him and stop him, Marshal. He's only doing it because we're about to starve out there. Him and me and my little girl. Uh, ma'am, oh, Wait, I... Marshal. You gotta understand the boy first, why he's doing it. All right. Why? My husband got killed a month ago. Shot. And since then, we've been near starving to death. The boy tried, but we... We ain't been making it. Excuse me, ma'am. I want to ask you something. Why, sure. What's your name? Mrs. Reeves. My husband was Jake Reeves. Did you know him? No. No, I didn't. But my husband, he knew him. 
didn't he, Marshal? He did. That's what he told me. Well, what's your name? Never mind my name right now, Mrs. Reeves. I, I don't understand. Marshal. Yes, ma'am. You were right about me being a terrible, selfish old woman. But would you do something for me? I think so. There'll be an envelope at the Dodge House. It'll be in your name. You know what to do with it. Yes, ma'am, I think I know. I'm going home now. Goodbye, Mrs. Reeves. Goodbye. I don't understand what she was saying, Mark. Miss Reeves, you want to come to my office and I'll try to explain it to you. I'll try to explain a lot of things to you. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. Mild and plenty quick on the draw. That's L&M for you. And the pure white miracle tip on the business end of every L&M filters out everything but the taste of the world's finest tobaccos. All you have to do is pick up a carton of L&Ms and you'll see what I mean. L&M stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Jeanette Nolan, Sam Edwards, and Helen Clee. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Start smoking with a smile With Chesterfield Smiling all the while With Chesterfield Put a smile in your smoking Just give them a try Light up a Chesterfield They satisfy Put a smile in your smoking By Chesterfield So smooth So satisfying Chesterfield You'll also enjoy Chesterfield's great radio show. Harry Como sings all the top tunes on CBS Radio every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Jack Webb stars in Dragnet on Tuesday nights. Check your local listings. Listen to Gunsmoke again next week.